Hi, I'm Deborah Lamada, and this is Women Entrepreneur Spotlight. I started this podcast because I believe that every woman entrepreneur has a story to tell, and by sharing that story, she could be helping the next woman entrepreneur looking for some guidance. So tune in, get comfortable, and enjoy the series. Hi, and welcome to Women Entrepreneur Spotlight. I am so excited to have Kat Perfetti, owner of Stone and Sage, located in Milford, Delaware, with me today. Hi, Kat. Thank you for taking the time to sit down and talk with me. How are you? I am great. Thank you for having me. Oh, you are welcome. All right. So I always like to ask two questions to get warmed up. And the first one is, if you could live anywhere <laughs> in the world, where would it be and why? Um, that's an easy one for me. Uh, Italy is my answer. Uh, Italy just feels like home to me um, when I go there. Um, It's actually part of my retirement plan. I'm hoping to spend uh, some time there and some time here. Once I'm retired, uh, we're kind of shopping apartments, kind of part-time, just seeing what's available and uh, hoping we can make that a reality at some point. Oh, that is awesome. I like that. I know my parents have been to Italy. Uh, They love it there. So yeah, that would be a great place. I like it. And asking asking this question, I'm finding out all the different places people go to. I have a bucket list now. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) All right. What's the most important lesson you have learned over the course of your career? Um, For me personally, it's to follow my intuition. Um, I always, I kind of doubt myself. And when I listen to my intuition about something, I always end up taking the right path. Um, as an entrepreneur, um, not every idea is going to (laughs) work. Right. Uh, I've had, I've, I've had more successes than failures, thankfully, but, um, I've definitely had some fails along the way. You got to know when to say when. Right. I feel like, though, when when you are really passionate about something, you can find a way to make it work. Nice. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. Prior to Stone and Sage, you have had a journey. How you got to that point, this your journey to Stone and Sage, um, a little bit of that journey and your family. I've been an entrepreneur pretty much my whole life. I had my first business was a flower shop. (laughs) I knew nothing about flowers. (laughs) I bought I had a flower shop. I had a car lot. I had a packing and shipping store. I had an eBay drop store. Uh, I opened an eBay drop store when the internet kind of first, you know, kind of popped off and nobody knew how to sell their stuff on eBay. So they would bring me the stuff and I would sell it for a percentage and then I would ship it out for them. The most recent one, uh, I was working on a food truck with friend Nancy. Um, She makes Polish food, pierogies and and stuff. And uh, we started out, we wanted to do a restaurant. The building we wanted to use was a historic building and it had to have a special hood and all this stuff. So we're like, okay, we're still going to figure it out. So we bought a food truck and then there was just, it was just one headache after another. And it was just a, you know, fail after fail and spending money. And my husband said to me one day, um, you know, you always follow the signs and for whatever reason, you're not following the signs that this is not the business for you. And I was like, whatever, I'm not going to fail, you know, (laughs) And uh, a few other things happened and I just, I was out of gas. I I couldn't make it work anymore. I put the food truck up for sale and decided I'm I'm doing this. I want to do a metaphysical store. This is what I've wanted to do for years. And I'm selling all this stuff off and taking the money and making it happen. There you go. And it and it is a lot of work from what I understand with the food truck, because it's just not let me throw the food into the truck and go. You mm-hmm. have first you've got to start with that truck and then you've got to have all the right equipment and permits and, yeah. and all those headaches that I that I and nightmares. Delaware doesn't make it easy. That's what I'm hearing. And I also hear <laughs> it, there is a long wait list to get everything inspected and finally get checked off. Is that right? That is true. And so. Yeah. Your husband, Mike, is at Delaware Branding. That's the print shop and the tattoo shop, correct? Correct. Yeah. And and then did you work with him during any of that time? Oh, yeah. Um, I um, actually, when we opened Delaware Branding, he was still teaching. Um, He, when we moved to Delaware, he was teaching at Howard Tannis. Uh, He was teaching um, special needs. And I worked at the shop during the day and we had another artist and then he would leave school and come to the shop and then tattoo to all evening. He finally was able to retire from the school. Uh, I think it's going on three years now. 
that he's been full time at, at Delaware Branding and able to, you know, we've been able to make it, you know, with without his school salary. <laughs> oh, nice. So that's awesome. So, that is really yes. good that you get. Yeah. That's a big yeah. milestone when you can do that and then and yep. do what you really, really want to yep. do. And so I do all. I do all the bookkeeping and all the shirt ordering and like I do the managerial managerial stuff, you know? Oh my gosh. Do you sleep? <laughs> I don't actually. Very little. <laughs> uh, uh, unbelievable. So while you're doing like the 10,000 things that you do, were you forming stone and sage, you know, in your, in your head on paper? So stone and sage has been an idea um, of my my friend Betsy and I from Pennsylvania, we, I used to live in Pennsylvania. We have said for the last 15 years, we're going to make a witchy store. We're going to do a metaphysical store. And we would, we used to sit out on her deck and drink a box of wine and talk about all the things that we're, we're going to do. And it was always a thing I wanted to do, but it just never was the right time when I was done with the food truck and I decided I was finally, I'm, I'm going to do something for myself. Uh, things just really fell into place. And I, I always had the vision in my head of what I wanted it to look like. Oh, wow. <laughs> So well, that's, that was my business plan until I had to put it on paper. Right. And that's a whole nother story. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so before or during getting Stone and Sage, the store Stone and Sage off the ground, you had a personal journey with your battle with breast cancer. Was it during, yes. before? And it was can before. You share, can, can you share your journey of, of it? Sure. Yeah. I, um, so my mom passed away from breast cancer in 2004. <sighs> so I've always have been very vigilant about getting my mammograms every year. Well, when, of course, when COVID hit, uh, 2020, um, there were no, you know, no, they weren't taking appointments. I didn't get my mammogram done or any, anything done in 2020. So my yearly exam came up. I went, uh, I went in to schedule my mammogram and my practitioner practitioner found a lump. Uh, that was uh, May of 2021, June, I was diagnosed. I had a very large lump in my left breast. I went through a mastectomy, um, in November of 2021 and you knew I didn't want um, silicone implants. Mm -hmm. What I wanted, I did a lot of research and what I wanted to do was the, it's called a DIEP flap and it is using your own tissue to recreate the breast, your own mm -hmm. body tissue. So it's like mm -hmm. kind of like a transplant. They take it from your belly and create a new breast. It's actually like your belly fat and they make a new breast out of oh, it. Wow. But there was no one in Sussex County that did that. So in November, I went in, there was a new doctor coming in, uh, Dr. Sarek, and uh, I ha actually had to wait for him to come to Bay Health, set up his practice. Wow. And I am the first person who ever had this done in Sussex County. Wow. Uh, uh, in Southern Delaware. Um, so uh, he did the DIEP flap. I was in the hospital for uh, six, six days, five or six days. And uh the recovery time was, was, you know, it was pretty intense because it was quite a, quite a surgery. I let, I, I let a year go by, um, healing from that. And then I just had, uh, another reconstruction done in January. Oh, wow. Okay. So, you know, during that time, you know, getting, um, the diagnosis of breast cancer, it's, it's terrifying, Absolutely. you know? Yeah. I have a 12 year old daughter, you know, I mean, thinking I'm not going to get to see her grow up, you know, yeah, it was, it was frightening. And, and especially on top of being as bad as it is. And then, and during COVID too, I mean, it was just with, yes, no they words. put off, they put off my surgery, which I was not happy about because they didn't, they, they kept saying like, it wasn't, uh, you know, a pressing issue. And I was like, what cancer like excuse Hello? me oh my okay God. so wow. we finally got in uh they finally approved the uh so i had a mastectomy in november and they put in uh, what's called an expander it's okay. just like a plastic mm -hmm. balloon type thing right. that's in there only temporarily right. and then um dr sarek really had to fight 
um, with the hospital. Well, they didn't have, they didn't have all the equipment because they had, no one had done these surgeries right. before. Right. So there were some things that they had to order and get. So we, so there was a little delay in that, but, th- but they, they really were on top of getting the things that they needed. Okay. And, um, um, he really kind of had to fight with them and be like, this isn't because they kept saying, well, the reconstruction, the DIEP flaps, not necessary. And he was like, oh no, it's necessary. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. So where are you in the journey now? Are you complete with reconstruction surgery? You look great. Uh, You feel good? Thank you. I do feel good. Um, So when I went in for my reconstruction, um, they actually found a lump in my right breast. So um, I do. I have a a consult coming up. I might have to go through a radiation Um, so my journey is not over with that, but, um, you know, I feel good every day. Mm -hmm. And if I, that's what I have to do, you know, that's what I have to do. And you just keep pushing forward because what other choice do you have? Oh my (laughs) gosh. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, I had mentioned in my notes to you, um, I had interviewed, uh, Christine De Janeiro, um, and she had, uh, she has had the mastectomy done. Um, mm-hmm. And then I have another woman also who's going through her her journey now with um, with the breast cancer. Um, so I'm hoping with this to share, you know, a little bit of everybody's journey with the women out there that I share my podcast with. So thank you. I appreciate that very much. Yes, please get your mammograms. Get Absolutely. your mammograms. <laughs> Absolutely. No matter how squishy you think it is, do it. <laughs> yeah, because, er, you know, catching it early is is so key. Absolutely. So key. That's right. All right. Thank you. Can you tell us what metaphysics is? So metaphysics is a, it's like a branch of philosophy that looks, it, it, kind of, it looks at what you can see and touch versus what you can't and believing in what you can't see and touch as much as believing in what you can see and touch, (laughs) if that makes any sense. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Um, Believing in intuition, signs, spirit, uh, having a spirit guide, communicating with those that have passed, that all kind of falls under the metaphysical category. And and do you, has the perception of the metaphysics changed over the years? Are people more accepting of the intuition? Um, And so I think that, I think that I I definitely think that it is definitely on the rise. And I think people associate metaphysical when they see that word, they associate it kind of with holistic healing with Mm -hmm. essential oils and herbs and whatever. I I think that's, it's definitely on the rise. Um, Mm -hmm. I think that people are realizing that uh, big pharma is not always the answer and some of the medications and the side effects are worse than the actual medication. And they're looking to alternative ways to heal physically, but mentally and emotionally. Some people are looking for messages um, and they come to shops like mine to meet um, a tarot reader or a medium. Um, You know, they might just need that message from someone for closure or to move on from grief. You know, there, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot to it. (laughs) Yeah. And I think people are more open to different ideas and different ways of healing. Um, You know, we're all in, in this time after COVID, the mental Mm -hmm. health issue is, is a big one. And and it's not always medication that you are always seeking. At least that's how I, what I feel. Um, And that perhaps people now just have a better understanding also I truly believe that people have a better understanding. So let's turn on the computer and we can read and find out about other things that are out there that are available to us. So, um, right. That we have a lot of people that come in, um, with questions about, you know, their spiritual journeys and, you know, we have a pretty uh, extensive library in the back, um, to, uh, help with the things that we're not, you know, can't be knowledgeable about everything. So we try to keep on hand things, uh, to help. Right. Uh, finding out all the information. Awesome. All right. Great. Um, Because I, I was doing my research also. It's one of the things I love to do and, and all the things that I, I have learned over the course of time. So finding out and coming to your shop, I, I have been learning a lot. So thank you very much. So you had a plan for, for planned for Stone and Sage. And did that plan help you acquiring the property and building where Stone and Sage is located? Did you have a business plan more or less? 
So, um, like I said before, my, my business plan was just a vision in my head. Um, but the uh, Milford Library owns the building. Oh, okay. um, so when the building uh, became available, I, like I, I put the food truck up for sale and the building became available. And oh, wow. I knew that that was the spot. Yeah. So I went to the library to ask about um, renting the building. And um, the executive director said, oh, there's a lot of interest in it. Because there's so much interest in it, we're having everyone do a business plan and a proposal of what you want to do with the business, or, you know, what you want to do with the building and what have you. So I had to go and get it all out on paper. <laughs> and, that, and, that's, and that's no small feat either. It is for, not. For that. It, that it is not. Absolutely. I've done several. <laughs> Um, so I presented the, you know, them with that. And then um, it was, it was a wait. It was, you know, hurry up and wait, you know, hurry up and get us all the paperwork. So it was two months before I found out that the, the building was going to be, was going to be mine. So they had then asked for references, business references. So okay. I had to, which, which was fine. Cause I've, I already have a business in Milford and I'm very close with a lot of business people and I was able to provide those. Finally, in August, the call came that the building was mine. Awesome. Oh my <laughs> God. Oh my I honestly God. didn't expect it because really? I thought, okay. eh, this is probably, you know, not up their alley. You know, they probably want a little more, you know, team business or something in there, a little more vanilla, <laughs> you know, and uh, I was ecstatic when that oh, call yeah. came. I was like, I will bring you a check today. Get that lease ready. <laughs> I got my pen is hot and the money's in my pocket. That's right. I got my checkbook in hand. All right, so why don't you let everybody know where Stone and Sage is located? So we are located at 10 Southeast Front Street uh, in Milford. We are directly across from uh, the library. And you do yeah. have a great location. As we were talking on Saturday, you have mm -hmm. a huge parking lot compared to everybody else in town. And I'm yes. sure everybody else is jealous. <laughs> yeah, you know, retail spots are, are hard to come by in Milford and one with the parking lot is pretty much next to unheard of. And I have lots and lots of plans yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what you're saying. to utilize that parking lot in the warm weather. So are you going to hold then outdoor events? We um, so, you know, Milford has the farmers. Milford has the oldest farmers market in Delaware. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, from um, they have it from April to October. So uh, what I want to do is once a month, I want to do kind of like a punk rock metaphysical flea market type thing, you know, at the same time that the farmer's market is going on. So oh, we'll get yeah. all the foot traffic from that. And that'll right. kind of grow the footprint of the farmer's market a little bit. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, I'm going to put um, a pergola and a little garden on the on the side of the building uh, so we can kind of have our meditations outside. We can okay. maybe have some of the classes outside, place for bands to play when we have events, you know, because yeah. Milford does a lot of um, they do the Ladybug Festival. They do the Freedom Festival. Uh, they do the third Thursdays every month during the summer. So they do have a lot of outside events that, that we can I utilize. Delaware in general has a lot of events going on. Um, mm -hmm. As I said to you, I have moved from uh, Connecticut down here. There is, if you say you're bored in Delaware, then you don't get a newspaper or gone on the computer because there is something for everybody every day, any time of the day. So <laughs> folks, <true. laughs> make it down to Milford because they're great down there. So <laughs> during your process, you got your, you got your lease and then you had to hire the contractors and begin uh, construction and turn that building in from a tired looking building. And it was very tired looking because I did see the before pictures to this beautiful, you know, inviting uh, in, uh, storefront that you have. What was that process like? As soon as I signed the lease, I called the painting company and I said, I need this painted inside and out because I, I couldn't imagine opening a metaphysical shop in a peach colored building. <laughs> <laughs> and the library didn't want to didn't want to help me with it at all. I oh. I paid for that book to have that building painted out of pocket inside wow. and out. They gave me one free month rent. Okay. <laughs> the first, okay. you know, <laughs> it's okay. I'll take whatever you're going to give me is fine. <laughs> but of course, with the name Stone and Sage, I felt incorporating Sage Green was a necessary component, yeah. um, you know, to 
to kind of just tie it all together, sort of, you know, and I know everybody automatically, you know, the sage bundles and, you know, has <laughs> multiple meanings, but I wanted it to, I wanted that sage green to be the, the, you know, yeah. the driving color behind it with the black trim. You no, know, it's, it's very inviting. And you, were those windows there or did you have those storefront windows put in? Nope. That was all there. All I did, there. all I did was have the building painted okay. and then I had this which we haven't talked about yet. I had a little bit of recent construction done. Other than that, I, I just painted it and, you know, bought some rugs and, you know, good to go. all, all the fixtures, you know, inside. And and being a woman entrepreneur and a woman owned business, do you, do you encounter any obstacles because you were a woman or not because you are well known in the neighborhood um, because this isn't your first business in Milford? I did not encounter too many obstacles opening this business at all. I mean, I had the capital. I was ready to go. I knew what I wanted to do. As a woman in the past, older gentlemen tend to look down their nose at you and not believe that they don't treat you on the same level as they would if they were talking to another another gentleman, you know, about yes. business. They yeah. tend to act like you don't know what you're talking about. And oh, can I talk to your husband? I was like, you know what my husband's going to tell you? Come and talk to me. Exactly. <laughs> that's, exactly, that's exactly what he's going to say. So you don't need it. You know, that that's really about the only obstacle I, me personally, that, that I can think of that I've, I've dealt with as far as being a woman in business. Oh, good. Good to hear. Um, Because I'm sure you have had plenty of other obstacles that had nothing to do with your gender at all, because going through construction (laughs) and everything, putting that store together, um, you know, Mm -hmm. is no easy feat in itself. So on your Facebook page, it says Stone and Sage is a metaphysical shop with a twist, metaphysical supplies, decor and Gothic style furniture. What does Stone and Sage offer other than what I just read? Classes, et cetera. (laughs) We do. um, We do classes. We have a tarot group that meets once a month. Um, we ha- just started a book club that meets once meets once a month. We have intuition circle every last the sat- last Saturday of every month. And then we have other classes. We have witchcrafts. They come in and do um, this time. They're doing bissums, uh, the brooms. You decorate your own broom. They've done triple moon wreaths in the past. Um, we have Dr. Carol Polio, who is who is so knowledgeable and enjoyable. Um, she does all types of different classes. She did feather wands, and she does our intuition circle. And I've spoken with her. She's awesome. She is awesome. I am I am so thankful to have her as part of our team for sure. Wow. Uh, we have tarot readers and mediums. Uh, we have Laura from the Gypsy Blues on Tuesdays. Um, we have Trash Panda Medium on Thursdays and Fridays. And then Carol does every other Saturdays uh, or psychic Saturdays. And Carol does Oracle cards and um, psychic cleansing. And um, she just does a, you know, a whole lot, a whole lot of whole lot of stuff. (laughs) So if somebody wanted to sign up for any of these classes, where do they go to find the information? Call Facebook, you can, you can call the store. We, if you go to Facebook at the top of our page, it'll say find tickets. That If you click that, that'll take you right to our Eventbrite. And all of our events are listed on there. If you go to our Instagram page in the bio, there is a link you can click. Also, will take you right to Eventbrite. And that's where we are limited on space. So that's why we sell tickets to everything to make sure we don't oversell anything and can't, can't fit everyone. Okay. Um, and how does that work? Has that been working out well for you it, using Eventbrite? It's been working great. I've noticed that um, it's been picking up a lot more through Eventbrite. Like people are getting notifications. Like I haven't even posted some of them on Facebook yet. And people are already buying tickets through Eventbrite. It's really picked up a lot. That's and awesome. Yeah, it's been, so- it's been good. When you were putting your business plan together, did you have to give them an outline of events that you were going to have or what else you were offering to to the to the neighborhood? 
I did not. Did not? I didn't. I, I just said I was going to do classes and workshops. Okay. I didn't give them a specific list of this is these are the classes because honestly, I didn't know what classes okay. I was going to offer. This one thing about this business that has just it has evolved, you nice. know, and it is just a constant evolution. I didn't. I had one reader that I knew I would be able to count on, and then like Trash Panda came. Laura show came up and just was like, I'll just do every Tuesday. And I was like, okay, we'll do every Tuesday. And she does candle making classes. Oh, cool. Um, you like every other month, she'll do a candle making class. Uh, her business is the gypsy blues. She supplies us with candles and stuff. Um, we also support many local uh, vendors in our store. Um, we have the Sisters of Sussex. They stock us with candles and soap and, and little intention kits. Uh, we have Kat uh, from the Ashes. Uh, she's from Del Mar. She, bring, she does something different every month. She makes beautiful candles and jewelry. We have from uh, Beyond the Veil. She does the black scrying mirrors. Wow. We have John Felke. He makes um, hats. Uh, we have Genevieve. Uh, Genevieve does our astrology classes, and she also does essential oil blends for us. I know I'm probably forgetting many more, but but uh, you know we try. <laughs> wow, I try wow. to support other little businesses as well. You know, for them to bring their stuff um, in, into into uh, the shop yeah, and. Yeah. And so, and we were talking about support uh, amongst the small businesses in Milford, and that's a great example right there. Not only are you, you know, supporting, you support each other in Milford, but you're also helping the local vendors just, you know, be able to come to you and, you know, you know, put their items into your store. So I, that is just a whole nother avenue that I don't think a, not everybody does, but I know quite a few in Milford, you being one, not too shabby, mm-hmm. definitely support the the local vendors, which I think is just awesome altogether. And, um, we do, we have a great community of support between the local businesses downtown. Yeah. I have to say, I can't think of anyone that doesn't support each other downtown. We are all on board with, we just want to see everyone thrive. Yeah. Which is great because if you're thriving and, and that person is thriving, it, it's that domino effect of, of helping each other. So, all right. This past weekend, you celebrated another milestone for Stone and Sage. Can you tell us what the milestone was and how and where to sign up? <laughs> so um, we built a room and it is a crystal light therapy room. Um, so the crystal lights are for chakra alignment. It, you go into the little room and there's a, a massage table there and a Above the massage table, there is a light with seven crystals coming out of it, each color aligning with the chakra. Underneath the sheet on the bed is a heated mat that has tourmaline and jade throughout the entire mat. We have meditation music playing. You lay down on the heated mat. We line up the crystals with your chakra area, you know, corresponding, and you can do it for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, or 45 minutes. It is a cleansing, balancing, just trying to get you refreshed. The the energy in that room is so powerful. When you when you walk in there, it's really incredible. We have Miss Coexist that works with us, and you can pair that up with Reiki. She does Reiki, and she does um, shamanic journeying as well. She's going to offer. Wow. Wow. And I did have, I did have a chance to stop by on Saturday uh, to see the store and to see that room. And when you, and you do have to step down into it, it just gives off a whole different vibe when you walk in and, and see Mm -hmm. what's there. And knowing that when you close that door, you, you can close the world out. Yeah. Yeah. So we actually, um, our first appointment, we had an open house Friday and Saturday. So people could come in and check it out and pick up some information and, uh, appointments actually start on Tuesday of this week. We're already half booked up for Tuesday. (laughs) Um, and you have to, as of right now, you have to call the store to make an appointment. The numbers, um, 302-265-2042. Um, at the store. Like I said, you you choose your amount of time. You can pair it up. I will have full pamphlets with all the information available at the store that you can pick up while you're in, in shopping as well. That's great. Starting tomorrow. 
Absolutely great. Yeah, definitely give the store a call. Definitely stop by the store. You have to you have to go in. And you did have, like you were saying, you had a, an open house on Friday and Saturday. And I, I was there in the morning. And how was the rest of the day for you? Uh, it was great. We had Aura Explorer, the Aura photographer in. It was a pop-up. Um, she's from Pennsylvania. And she came down on the recommendation of a, a friend of mine from from PA and um, it was great. Everybody enjoyed it. So everybody got to come in, get their aura photography done, shop the store, see the new room. We were packed the whole day Saturday. It was, it was, it was a busy day. It was really good. So with the photography, what do you, what type of reading do you get? What do you learn from that? Um, So every person's aura is different. Um, She takes the photograph and then she sits with you for a couple minutes and explains. Uh, what your aura is on the left side is kind of like your past and and it, it, it goes around and onto the right side is like your present, uh, present future. Wow. <laughs> and of wow. course, everyone's different, you yeah. know, so. Yeah. Is, um, she, is but, she coming? Is she coming back to the store at, at another time? We are going to have her back in May. May. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Great. In May. But you really have a lot of things going on at that store. Uh, there is something for everybody and everybody can be involved in something. Um, and I'm sure the library kind of maybe figured that out that you are, in, you were incorporating, you know, everybody just, you weren't mm-hmm. singling out just one, one age group. If you want to put it right. that way. So uh, that's great. And so what marketing strategy strategies have you been using though for the store to get your name out there? So I, we use Facebook and Instagram mostly. I print out the class schedules for every month and every person that comes into the store gets one in their bag or takes one with them, take them, uh, put them at um, some different like cork boards around, you know, just okay. stick up a flyer here and there. But it's mostly mostly social media, word of mouth. Yeah. Does, does one work better than the other? Uh, Facebook is more popular than Instagram. I think a lot of our, I don't, I don't know, I don't want to say that. A lot, a lot of our people are a little bit older. The older generation seems to use Facebook and the younger it's... generation seems to like Instagram. So we yes. kind of try to do both, you know, yeah. but it's easier to get the information on Facebook because you can put the event events up, you know, you can put, I think it's easier to find the information on Facebook than it is on Instagram Instagram. because Instagram is just like a picture or a reel or whatever. So I think that's why Facebook kind of works a little bit better. Better. Nice. Okay. What motivates you to keep going when you are having an off day? My daughter, my daughter is my motivation. I keep telling her. How old is she? She's 12. Wow. She's 12. She's in seventh grade. Oh, nice. I keep telling her I'm I'm building her an empire. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Generational uh, empire. I like yep. it. Absolutely. You have been open since September of 2022, correct? Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. You got that store together really quick. You took over in August? I signed the lease August 15th and I opened September 17th. Wow. That's awesome. (laughs) Has there been one moment that stands out to you during this time that you've had the store open? The most emotional moment was the ribbon cutting for Uh me (laughs) Uh because it was like, you know, seeing my dream become a reality, you know, but also the customers that have become friends in this short, you know, that I've actually met through the store that, that come back and, you know, want to talk and, and chat and, and, you know, we, we talk about their spiritual journeys or their family or whatever. And we've made quite a, quite a few good friends so far since we've opened and it's, it's been, it's been great. That's great. And Milford has really welcomed you. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's been good. You know, and that was, you know, one thing I I wasn't sure how it was going to (laughs) be perceived, you know, but uh, it's been fantastic. It has been, I I can't complain at all. Is there a downside to owning your own business? I guess it would be, you know, maybe I make $3,000 today and maybe I make a hundred dollars tomorrow, you know? (laughs) It right, depends. Right. There's no guarantee of a paycheck at the end of the week would be the only thing that's, you know, but you know, if you, if you hustle and you put your heart into it, yeah, it'll yeah. succeed. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you are doing that. That is for sure. Do you have a mentor? Do you have somebody that you can say, Hey, so I guess for, this is my first retail business. And I would have to say Dawn Vaughn of not too shabby uh, was my mentor in uh, helping me 
get this retail business up and running. You know, he let me in on some retail secrets, you know, and kind of guided me do this and do that and don't do this. And if I do have an issue, which I haven't had too many, I'm like, hey, Dawn, (laughs) what do I do? (laughs) And uh, he has always been there for me uh, with great advice. He is, and William too, are some of the nicest people I have met here in Delaware. Are you a sole proprietor? Yes. Yes. So it's just you. So when something goes wrong, it's you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yep. It's just me. (laughs) But you have employees. I like to say I have people that, I like to say that we work together. Okay. I I don't like to, I don't like to call them employees because I, I, we all work together to create this what magical place that that we have together. Nice. Miss Coexist and I have been friends. Uh, her name, her first name is Angela. We've been friends for a long time. We used to play roller derby together. <laughs> and um, I played 13 seasons of roller derby. <laughs> um, we used to play roller derby together. And, um, uh, you know, we see each other quite a bit. And when I told her about the idea, um she and I manifested like daily that we were going to get this building and we were going to do the thing because at that time she was in her shamanic training and doing Mm -hmm. her Reiki training and everything. And we manifested it, you know, that Mm -hmm. it was going to happen. And, um, she is a wonderful addition. Um, you know, she likes to talk. She always has the, like the right answers for, for people when they're, they're, you know, questioning things and, uh, uh, she is always a positive energy force and always smiling and oh, that's she's nice. just a great person to have around. And I am especially thankful for her oh. being part of this business. That's great. Um, and I also have Nancy, who is literally like my right hand. Um, she has been, she's my and she keeps me in line and she's my assistant and, oh, you know, go. tells me what we need and where I need to be and what I need to be doing. And uh, uh, I am very thankful to, nice. to work with her every day as well. Nice. I mean, you know, they say it's a village to, you know, it takes a village to raise a family. It also takes a village to to run a business. And when you have yeah. the right people in your village, it, it definitely pays off and shows as yeah. as your store does. Absolutely. Um, yeah. But then, are, yeah. Well, we added Laura from the Gypsy Blues and we've got the Trash Panda Medium and, and Car- Dr. Carol Polio, you know, they're, they're, you know, at the store all the time as well. And, and I'm thankful to have all of them. That's nice. As yeah. part of our team. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's what it is all about. It does take that team to, to pull it all together. What advice would you give another woman entrepreneur starting out? I would have to say, know your market. No, no know the area that you're going into. You got to have in this, in this day and age, you got to have an angle. You got to have, you know, if you're opening a a cupcake store, try to find a place where there's no other cupcake store or have something that nobody else has. Uh, When I was, of course, I mean, I'm, I'm Milford all the way, but there's really nothing else like stone and sage. There's, um, Finding Avalon in Camden, which is a beautiful store. And then there's like a couple little places down by Rehoboth, like down by the beach, mm. but there's nothing around Where you us. So I was like, this is a wide open market. And there was no, when we opened the tattoo shop, there was no tattoo shop or a screen printing place in Milford oh, wow. when we opened. So you got to find your, find your niche, find your, your researcher market. Mm-hmm. Don't take no for an answer. You know, if you really want to do it, don't let anybody tell you no, don't, don't get discouraged and don't be, don't be rigid. We all go into our business, like, this is what I want it to be, but it doesn't always end up being, this is what I want. You know, this is what I thought it would be. It could be better letting it, let it, let it evolve and let it turn into what people need. Right. Right. Uh, and yeah. that's really important. I think I like that. Know? Absolutely. You're right. We, I think we all have done that. We've all go into, this is how I want it. This is how it's going to be. And then you finally realize, oh yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Right. This is working over here. It's not at all what my original plan was, but this is working. <laughs> and then, so and we're just going to go with this. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Um, why don't you let people know one more time how to get in touch and where you're located a stone and sage. 
We are at uh, 10 Southeast Front Street in Milford, Delaware, right across from Milford Library. The phone number is 302-265-2042. You can find us on Google under Stone and Sage Milford, Delaware. We are on Facebook and Instagram, both. We are Stone and Sage DE. You have to put the DE for Delaware at the end. Okay. So it's Stone and Sage DE, Facebook or Instagram, and all of our classes and everything, everything's on there that that you need. And you can send me a Facebook message, send me an Instagram message. I get, I get all of that call the store. So one of my goals with Women Entrepreneur Spotlight podcast series is to build a network of women who support each other. And I would love to add your name to that list. I am building a group. I'm fitting that into everything else too. So, but I would love to, <laughs> I would love to add your name to that. I would love that. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate that. Is there anything else that you would like to tell my listeners that I haven't touched on? No, I think we covered pretty much everything. Yeah. <laughs> this was great. Kat, it was a pleasure speaking with, speaking with you. I appreciate you taking the time. The store in Milford is Stone and Sage. Please stop by. You will not be disappointed. And I can't wait to do a follow-up with you for your one-year anniversary. Oh, I'm already planning it. So <laughs> <laughs> I can't yeah. wait as well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being with me tonight. It has been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. I enjoyed this a lot. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Women Entrepreneur Spotlight. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. For updates on my next interview, follow me on Facebook at Woman Entrepreneur Spotlight. Until then, keep being awesome.